you, Sam, for that uh, kind introduction. Thank you, TEDx, and thank you, NASA. Fasten your seatbelts, it's going to be a bumpy ride. I'm here to talk to you about the universe between our ears, the last great frontier of science. I'm here to tell you that we'll know more about parallel universes, colliding galaxies, and black holes long before we know what's in between our ears. This is the last great frontier of science. When I talk to young people, I say, if you want to do something wimpy, you go into rocket science. Rocket science is for wimps. The real action is neuroscience. <laughs> The last frontier of the last frontier of science is behavioral neuroscience. What do we mean by schizophrenia? My medical students have seen a person who pulled out his eyeballs as a delusional schizophrenic, obedient to God. He pulled out his eyeballs. What do we mean by Alzheimer's disease? We fear it more than death itself. Kevorkian's first assisted suicide person was in the early stages of Alzheimer's. Rather be dead than have Alzheimer's disease. What do we mean by consciousness? What do we mean by learning and memory and love? All of that is behavioral neuroscience the last frontier of the last frontier of science. Now let's do some mathematical calculations. We have several quadrillion synapses or connections within the brain and every time you learn something, every time you experience something, every time you do something, the connections in the brain are always changing. What are the possible number of connections in your brain, in your brain, and in your brain? We have just did the math. We have limitless possibilities with the human brain and the history of the 20th century proves the limitless capabilities of the human brain by the great good that was accomplished by humanity and by the great evil that was accomplished by humanity limitless possibilities of the human brain for better or for worse. Now let's talk about injuries to the brain. The brain can be injured in many different ways. This is an example of a person who died from a brain injury. The blood that killed this person has hardened here. This was a fatal brain injury that killed this individual. The primary causes of fatal traumatic brain injuries are falls. Whether it be young people or old people, falls is a life-threatening issue when it comes to traumatic brain injuries. But when it comes to the primary cause of traumatic brain injury, death, in non-geriatric people, the number one cause is bullets. And who puts the bullets in the brain? The bad guy by way of homicide or the person himself or herself by way of suicide? Two-thirds of all traumatic bullet-inflicted deaths are suicide. We have 50% more suicides in America, then we have homicides, and nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about the Olympic and world records that we're sitting with young people killing themselves at increasing rates every year for the past several years. Many other ways to injure the brain than just simply through trauma. Stroke is another way to injure the brain. It causes a bleeding problem or a blood problem, but that's another kind of brain injury. But there are many other kinds of brain injuries. What is it that causes a person to blow their brains out with a shot Gun. That might be related to depression. It might be related to bipolar disorder. And it turns out psychiatric illnesses are a different form of brain injury. And you say, no, they're not. They're psychosocial kinds of issues. And I say, yes, they are. They are psychosocial issues. They are also biological issues. And if you don't believe me, I'll give you all of the data on inflammatory cytokines and excitatory amino acids and uh, uh, oxidative stress factors that are linked to depression, that are linked to autism, that are linked to fragile X syndrome, that are linked to bipolar disorder, that are linked to schizophrenia. Psychiatric disorders are a form of brain injury. Now, let's look at this area of the brain, down deep in the middle, hard to see except for those in the front. This is the neurocircuitry of reward, the neurocircuitry of pleasure. Schweitzer says, only those among us who have sought and found how to serve will ever be truly happy. You want to have authentic happiness to fire this circuitry, serve the greater good. But you can also fire this circuitry with all of the drugs of abuse. The most deadly, of course, are tobacco and alcohol, but cocaine, heroin, and amphetamine. And what happens when a person fires this circuitry with those drugs of abuse is they get a brain injury. Brain injuries known as chemical dependency. Now what happens to the person that I saw a few years ago who was a homeless alcoholic person? You know, when she was a little girl, what she said she wanted to be when she grew up, she said, I want to be an alcoholic, homeless person because I'm weak-willed, I lack God in my life, and I'm a jerk, right? So now, what had the clinical colleagues of mine done for this individual who was uh, suffering from some rare complications of her alcoholism? They just bilaterally amputated her femurs. In the vernacular, they just chopped her legs off. When she was a little girl, you know what she said she wanted to be when she grows up? She said, I want to be an alcoholic, homeless, legless person because I'm a jerk, I'm weak-willed, I want God in my life, right? Wrong! That's called a prejudice, that's called a stereotype. She has a brain injury called chemical dependency. And with that brain injury called chemical dependency, good people end up doing 
really bad things. And when they do really bad things, they deserve consequences. And when they do really bad things, we need to be protected from them. But when they do really bad things because of this brain injury, they also need to be treated. Now, let's ask the question, where is the least effective, most costly place to deal with chemical dependency and mental illness? Or jails. And let's ask the next question. What is the single largest institutional provider of chemical dependency and mental health treatment in the United States of America? Or jails. Let's do the math that doesn't add up. The people that represent us are supposed to be leading us on the Capitol Hill area and in our state uh, general assemblies. We don't want followers up there. We need to be electing leaders out there who are going to understand chemical dependency is way more than just simply saying no. Now, I want to show you another part of the nervous system. This is the spinal cord. Now, I don't know about you, but the first time I saw the human spinal cord, I was a little disappointed. I thought there'd be more to it. So now, what I want to tell you about is an important question that you've been obsessing about for many years, at least since adolescence, as it relates to the spinal cord. What's up with the armpit? Is it just a hairy, smelly place? All right, let's address that question by considering one of the greatest creative accomplishments of the human hand, namely Michelangelo's David. Let's think about how Michelangelo created David. Brain said, okay, hand, let's do some stuff. Went through the spinal cord to the hand. And how did those nerves get to the hand? Through the armpit. Is the armpit just a hairy, smelly place? No. And how did Michelangelo create David? Through his armpit. I want to end by saying the following. We have in front of us a terrible problem, psychiatry and neurological problems. I want you to think about holding fast to the human that's inside all of us, to quote the diving bell and the butterfly. And I want you to think about Goethe. Goethe says you see what you look for. I'd like you to look for greatness in people with mental disorders. I'd like you to look for greatness in people with developmental birth defects. Can you do that? I would say to you, America, we can do much better. We can do much better. Thank you.